Hello and welcome to Creating a Fall Resistant Body. I'm your host, Coach Ken Dollarpool. So now let's take a look at specific training strategies for creating a fall resistant body. First thing we're going to look at uh, is static balance. But before we actually get into that, I want to make sure that you, to emphasize that you practice always in a safe space. So a safe space would be defined as probably a doorway is ideal because you've got your hands on either side of you to catch you if you get into trouble. Uh, using an, a solid counter or a chair or something like that that isn't going to move on you. So always practice in a safe space. So when we look at static balance, a lot of times people, uh, as they get older, say, oh, my balance is horrible, but they're usually referring to their static balance. And we can definitely train and improve static balance, but it's not the most important type of balance that we really need to work on, but we'll get to that. So let's take a look at our static balance sequence. So the first thing I'd like you to try is getting your feet about hip to shoulder width apart and you can put your hands on your hips and then looking straight ahead try not to look straight down at the ground or up up in the air but look straight ahead and then come up on your toes and hold and then come back down try to hold from anywhere from three to five seconds come up on both toes raise up and come back down okay so that one's pretty easy the next one that we'll look at and i'll show it both facing the camera and then sideways would be what we call a split stance. So now I'm in parallel, but if I put one foot forward and one foot back in this position, can you kind of gently bend both knees together, keeping your torso up so I'm not falling forward, but just see if you can lightly go up and down in this position and then switch feet. And again, notice the feet are about hip to shoulder width apart, and I'm coming up and down just nice and easy. And I'll turn one more time this way so you can kind of see it from the side. So I'm here, chest is up, bending both knees together. So I'm not pushing forward this way. I'm letting my torso drop straight down just a little bit. This is just challenge your balance a little. All right, and then finally, uh, single leg stance, which is arguably the most challenging. So from this single leg stance, first thing you want to do is soften your knees. So I'm going to turn sideways uh, just for a moment and I'm going to lock my knees. It's pretty abrupt. And then I'm going to soften my knees. So when I say soft knees, this is not soft, this is locked. Just nice and loose. Okay. So if we're standing in our parallel stance, I'm going to shift my weight over to my left leg and I'm bending my knee, softening it, bringing my hands up on my hips. And for this, looking out at the floor about six feet in front of you is prob probably appropriate. You can put a book or a towel or something to focus on. You're going to try to pick that right foot up, push it forward, come back to center, out to the side, back to center and back to the rear. Now between these, it's certainly okay to touch down when you need to, but you wanna to try to get in to that soft knee position and then just hover your foot above the floor. You don't need to even touch. And one little trick that I like to uh, teach is if, if you're starting to lose your balance, if you just take this foot that's hovering and push it against your leg, it'll kind of stabilize you and you can regroup and then you can go again, all right? So you'll do this obviously on both legs. Try to hold each position, the forward push of the foot out, lateral, and then back to the rear, okay? One thing that you can do to kind of, as extra credit, if you're really getting comfortable with staying on one foot and moving your foot in various positions is to try standing on one foot and you don't need to be moving your feet now other than just shifting your weight over. 
practice shutting one eye and then the other and see how that affects your balance. Then try looking up and down without moving your head. So just moving your eyes while you're in that uh, static balance position. So looking up at the ceiling, slowly looking down. Just be aware of how that's affecting your balance. And then for a little more challenge, keeping your head steady, you can try looking left and right. But I think you'll be really surprised how much our vision, this vestibular system we call it, of looking in different directions. And certainly if you start moving your head while you're standing on one foot, it becomes a very much more challenging exercise. So again, practice in a safe space, preferably a doorway, and have fun with it. So now we're gonna take a look at dynamic balance. And dynamic balance, obviously by the name, is characterized by movement. And in my opinion, this is a far greater skill to uh, hone than just static balance. Because normally, when we're out in the real world, we're moving and having the ability to stick the landing, so to speak, is critical. So the first dynamic drill that we'll look at for balance will be just a forward step. And I wanna emphasize, just like I talked about when you're walking downhill, uh, getting your foot to land sort of on the same angle as the terrain, when you step intentionally to land on one foot, make sure you land on your forefoot. Try to avoid landing this way. This is not a stable position. And if the surface is loose, you're gonna have problems. So with our knees soft, I just take a forward step. I'm gonna land, hit my forefoot, and then the heel's gonna come down. I'm doing that slow so you can see. So it's forefoot, the heel comes down, and then I catch. So in real time, it looks something like this. Two, three. Generally, I like to have you hold it for about three seconds, just so long enough so that you own that position. You're not just stepping and going, oh, and right back. So forward step, sink. I'm bending my knee at the same time, and I step back, okay? Same thing with the other side. Forefoot, soft knee, two, three, and step back, okay? Now we can try this laterally. So we're in this position. It's simply, again, land on the forefoot, step to the right, shift your weight, two, three, and we can just go right back over the other side, two, three. Step, two, three, step, two, three, all right? And for a little added challenge, you can try stepping backwards. So we're in this position, let that forefoot hit, rock back, and now you've got to stop your weight, your momentum from going back, and step forward. So this one can be integrated actually with the forward step, and you can work on going forward, two, three, and backwards, two, three. So just simple stepping. And now if you wanna really challenge yourself, we can try a rotational step. So with a rotational step, I want you to make a conscious 90 degree turn. So in this case, I'm gonna take my left foot and I'm gonna point it 90 degrees away from me, okay? And then I'm gonna come this way, two, three, and then I'm gonna come back to the start position. Same thing going the other way. Soft knees, turn that foot 90 degrees, landing on the forefoot, heel, and holding and coming back. So for any of these dynamic drills, once stepping is pretty easy for you, you can actually make it a little hop. So that would look something like this, where we're actually just hop and stick, okay? Or to the side, same thing, hop 
stiff. So it's a subtle, but there's a little more momentum that you have to control with a hop than just a step. But don't get ahead of yourself, practice, make sure that you can step, uh, soften the knee as you land, stick that landing and hold it for three seconds. And once you've got those mastered, go for the, go for the hopping. So now we're gonna take a look at jumping and landing. Now try not to get nervous about this. It may not be appropriate for you. If you've got a lot of joint pain, or it's contraindicated for you, don't worry about this section. But if you're a little, if you're uh, able-bodied, healthy, and are able to shock load your body just a little bit, I'm gonna give you some gentle progressions to teach you how to jump, and more importantly, how to land, okay? So initially, what we're gonna do is start in a parallel stance again, and what I like to call an athletic stance, okay? So this is a ready position. My feet are about hip shoulder width apart. My knees are soft and flexed. My butt's back, my back is straight. And what we're gonna do from here is just come up on our toes. And as we come down, we're gonna sweep our arms back in, into this catch position. So we're gonna come up on the toes and come down, okay? So from the side, it'll look something like this. I'm in my athletic stance. I'm coming up. And as I come down, I throw my arms backwards. So this backward motion of the arms is really important because we're trying, in most cases, we've got forward momentum going. And as we, as we come down, we wanna make sure we're pushing our hands back fast and that will anchor us to the ground. If you just jump and you land on your heels or something like that, you're gonna go backwards. Or if you land on your toes, you're gonna to go forward. So it's this, this motion of letting the arms come back, pushing the hips back, which makes this nice and solid. So if you jumped off of a curb, some small object, you're gonna land firmly. So, the next one in the progression is to actually come way up on the toes. And then as we come down, we're gonna let our feet just come off the ground a little bit. So this is a mini jump, okay? So we're in our athletic stance, raising up on the toes and lifting the feet up off the ground and landing. Let me show you that from the side. So coming up, and down. So as long as you don't have any joint pain, practice that motion of as the feet hit, arms go back. Feet hit, arms go back. So once you've mastered the little mini jump in place on the floor, I'd invite you to try jumping up. Now jumping up is gonna be a lot easier. It may sound a little scary, but it's a lot easier to control an up jump than say starting from up on a step and asking you to drop down to the floor. So I like to use an aerobic step. It's about four inches thick. You can use any height you want to get comfortable with this. The whole point of this is to learn to jump a little higher. So we're building some explosive power in our, in our glutes and we're gonna learn how to control this, this motion of, of landing again. So as my feet hit the deck, my arms should be coming back. I'm starting just a few inches back behind the deck. You don't wanna be way back here. We're not making this a forward jump. We want this to be pretty much a straight up and straight down. And our target area, the deck, is we wanna hit our entire foot on the deck. So we don't wanna land with our heel back or our toes hanging over the edge. So this is really important. So try to land as much as you can with feet centered on the deck. So I'm gonna get in my athletic stance with my arms back because I'm gonna use my arms to help lift me. So I'm in that athletic stance, like I'm diving into a pool. I'm gonna swing my arms up and I'm gonna land. So again, notice that as I land, as the feet hit the deck, the arms go back. So again, I'm loading, 
I'm gonna throw my arms up. That's gonna help me get off the ground. And then the arms back and landing in this good, solid athletic stance. And finally, uh, the last progression in our jumping and landing sequence is to learn to master a forward jump and landing firmly. So all the same mechanics that we've been working on up to this point from being up on the toes and swinging the arms back quickly, we're gonna put this all together in a forward hop or a forward jump. So I'm just gonna jump a couple of feet maybe. I'm loading, get the arms back. It's just like you were gonna dive into a pool. So I'm here, I'm gonna let my arms swing forward this time to help me get that forward momentum. And as my foot, feet hit, the arms go back. So I'm loading and stick. Step back, load, stick. So that's the last progression in this jumping series. And again, make sure no joint pain or make sure that it's appropriate for you to be practicing these things and uh, good luck. So now we're gonna take a look at some band resisted movements of walking, skipping, running and jumping. Uh, assuming that again, that it's appropriate for your situation. Some of you may belong to gyms, health clubs that have these uh, types of rubber bands that I'm using and they're just linked together. You just uh, interlock them. Make sure you've got a good solid surface to anchor to. And I'm just going to show you these. The reason I'm indicating uh, this in this fall, creating a fall resistant body is that a lot of times we don't work enough on uh, explosive type quick movement and using a band is a very safe way for you to stay in place and walk, run, skip all these movements that I'm going to demonstrate uh, in a safe way and it also the band helps correct our posture because some of us as we walk we may be <clears throat> kind of walking like this with the band pulling back against you, it tends to kind of make you aware to get your chest up. So you want just enough resistance that you can maintain your spot that you've come out to. So for me in this position, I can walk or uh, just walk normally. I can march, which is a little higher where we're getting the knees up about waist height. We can skip or we can run. So if we put too much tension on the band, every time we get on one foot, it's gonna be pulling us back. So just enough tension to where you feel it pulling you back and it forces you to pay attention to your, your mechanics and your, uh, your posture. And again, the sequence to work on is just walking first. Make sure you're using those arms. Opposite arm, opposite leg, okay? And if we want to take it up a little bit, we march. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Skipping, if you remember how. And if it's appropriate, running. And one final one that you can do from the last segment we did on jumping and landing. Take a little of the tension out of the band and this will really test your landing skill. So you're here, you jump forward and stick that landing. And I can assure you, if you do not get those arms working back fast, it's gonna pull you backwards. So really make sure that you've mastered this skill uh, just with jumping with just your body weight, no bands. And once you're really solid with it, it's a great exercise for power and learning how to stick that landing. So now we're gonna add what we call quickness and agility. Again, 
if it's if you've got joint pain or it's contraindicated for you to be moving your feet fast, uh, obviously don't. But we we're really a big part of fall resistance is training our nervous system, and it's good to practice things slowly and under control at the beginning but once you have the ability you're pain-free uh, we need to work on little quick chop choppy type movements so even if you are for example uh, have to do a chair based exercise you can still learn to move your feet quick so you can be sitting on the chair with your back away from the back and practice some just quick steps this way or even make them what we call fire feet tap away all right we can go out out in we can go forward back but it's fast quick movements you can just make up any movement you want just as long as you're sitting up tall and you get those feet and knees moving in different ways. All right, so that's for seated population. So continuing on with our quickness and agility, there's a number of drills that we can do with the aerobic step that we worked with earlier. So we can obviously do a marching movement up and changing the lead foot each time. So this time I'm gonna step up right, step back left, march, step up left. You can do any type of pattern you want with that, but obviously working on speed, quickness. We can also do an in place. I'm gonna do it up on the deck so you can see it, uh, but fire feet. So you're here, you get in an athletic stance and it's, Okay, move those feet quick. Notice I'm not getting them very high off the ground. Just tap it away and try to keep those feet again centered on the deck. But you can do it off the floor first. That's probably a better, better place to start. We can also do lateral stepping up where we step up, back. We can do rotational movements where we step up this way, step back down, step up. So there's where that 90 degree turn comes in again. So anything like that that's getting you moving a little quicker than you're used to. And in this case, we also have a little level change. So some of you may have seen these agility ladders as they're called. They're basically like a uh, a form of hopscotch. Uh, we can do a number of foot drills with these. So if you don't have one of these, your gym may, uh, or just get some chalk and draw some squares. These are probably about uh, 18 inches square. So just enough room for your feet. So some basic movements would be quick feet uh, going forward. So it's prancing. Try not to look at your feet. This is one of the hardest things to get students to uh, not do when they're, when they're dealing with something like this. Everybody wants to look at it. Trust, even if you step on the, the rails or the side straps, it's not a big deal. But try to get used to using your peripheral vision. Good, that's good uh, fall resistance practice in itself. And just coming through as quick as you can. So we can go like that. We can do a, what's called a side run, where you step in both feet and out, leading with that left foot in this case, in, in, out, out. And we can go back, in, in, out, out. This time I'm leading with right. And so in, uh, we'll call this go time, it would look like this. So you want to develop a pattern. You want to hear it. Don't try to think about your feet. Hear the pattern. Make your feet do it. Okay? So those, that's uh, another drill I like. So another pattern you can play with is what we call out, out, in, in. 
So you can start with both feet straddling the box, bring one in, the other, step forward. Okay? And so in more real time, it would look like this. Right here. Okay. We can also start from inside and go out. The opposite of that. So it's out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in. So in real time, we would be. Okay. So lots of drills. If you look up uh, online, YouTube, uh, any of those uh, resources, you just put in agility ladder drills. There are literally hundreds of patterns you can do with your feet, your hands. There's all kinds of interesting stuff you can do. So this will help make you quicker, keep your nervous system sharp, your reaction times will be quicker, and you're more likely not to fall if you're really used to moving your feet under your body and having that control.